Jurassic Park The Game takes the 1993 film Jurassic Park, carefully drills into its amber, and extracts some of that DNA in the hopes of replicating this thing it holds so dear. But just as with John Hammond's project, the devil proves to be in the details, with some very important gaps in the sequence plugged with some questionable material. In these four episodes, Telltale Games checks off many of the locations, activities, and creature encounters a fan of the franchise would expect, and also a few ways to revisit some of those in a mildly interesting new context. The action takes place just after the Isla Nublar incident, with almost all new characters, and to its credit, the game doesn't completely collapse in the absence of familiar faces. Some of the newcomers even have some measure of charm, but thanks to the game constantly bouncing between the ensemble, the cast just feels like an array of archetypes, and we rarely linger long enough on any one to sense much nuance. However, none of those things are the real issue. There's a systemic problem with, well, the system for inputs. Players are not allowed direct control here. Quick time events are the rule, not the exception, and they're misguided in their design. If a player can predict, based on the established rules, which button is likely to, say, swing a pipe at an attacking dinosaur, a reminder of which button that is could be in the periphery. On the other hand, if a character is meant to do something outside the player's input vocabulary, a game has to teach, very quickly, which buttons and movements do what and allow enough time for the player to observe, process, and react. Jurassic Park is in too many spots inconsistent, so those inputs are not easily predictable, and a poor teacher, demanding simple call-and-response gameplay, if not wholesale memorization. Consequently, the more engaged you are in the actual scene, the worse you're likely to perform. What ends up happening is not only are those quick time events unsatisfying, but they also start to actively work against enjoying the other components of the game besides the amusing death sequences. The later episodes are especially guilty of this. It's not really a question of difficulty, since there isn't much, and there seem to be very frequent autosaves. It's not even uniformly bad. There's a rifle in the first episode which is handled quite well, Chekhov would be proud. And there's even a bit of silver lining to those quick time event clouds in how they enhance the frantic powerlessness that befits the horror genre. However, some sections can be passed without succeeding at a single button prompt, and the only consequential choice in the game is all too easy to miss because of the six to eight hours you've just spent being conditioned to mindlessly parrot inputs as soon as they appear. The most difficult thing in this game is trying to remain engaged during the simple, menial puzzles and the moments where all the player can do is helplessly await the next command. It may be possible to enjoy your time with Jurassic Park the game, if fun finds a way. But I'm reluctant to recommend it, even with reservation, and even to fans of the movies. But, uh, well, there it is. Jurassic Park, the game, earns two out of five.